Yo, what is up, my people? It is your boy Sangoma Vic, and I am back with another article. Like, I didn't write the articles, just some interesting I saw on the internet. I thought, like, I'll oh, share a few thoughts with you guys, give you some thinking points, and uh, see what you think. So, uh, here it's uh, the Dutch Prime Minister apologizing for slavery. Uh, I read about this a few days ago, and I thought I should find saw a lot of articles about it, but I thought I should find something that was really like rooted from the people who were offended in this. So I have an article here by the South Africans, the South African, like obviously South Africa was colonized by the Dutch at, a, at some point in time in their history. And uh, yeah, the people filled the brunt of the blow from the Dutch, obviously. So uh, let's just uh, read this and see what it says. So crime against humanity. Dutch prime minister apologizes for 250 years of slavery. The Dutch state of Netherlands bears responsibility for the great suffering inflicted on enslaved people and their descendants, said Mark Root. Mark Root is definitely ooh, prime minister. Huh? The Dutch prime minister Mark Root on Monday, 19th of December, officially apologized for his country's 250 year involvement in slavery. Root referred to slavery as a crime against humanity. Yeah, doesn't it come at a convenient time indeed? I don't know. I'm just saying this kind of smells like bullshit to me. PR stunt, but hey, how would I know? Just reading an article, right? So the Dutch PM, Root apologizes for slavery. According to AFP, he is here. According to AFP, Root's apology comes nearly 150 years after slavery ended in the Netherlands, overseas colonies, which include Suriname, islands such as Kurakawa and Aruba in the Caribbean and Indonesia in the East and South Africa. Obviously. Today, on behalf of the Dutch government, I apologize for the past actions of the Dutch state. Yeah, Mr. PR here is the one definitely they're going to send to apologize. Yeah, that's how it is. The Dutch state of the Netherlands bears responsibility for the great suffering inflicted on enslaved people and their descendants, said Root, speaking from the Dutch National Archives. Yeah, they keep archives about this thing because it affects their money. So they have to. See? What are you talking about? Economics, right? Enslaved people and their descendants. Suffering inflicted. Yeah, they ain't thought about economics, but they keep it in the Dutch National Archives because it impacted their economy. Trust me. That's all these people care about. They don't care about no human lives. Shit. Root repeated parts of the speech in English, uh, Papiomento and Stranantonga, which are, which are the languages spoken in the Caribbean and Suriname. We, living in the here and now, can only recognize and condemn slavery in the clearest terms as a crime against humanity, he added. Damn, I definitely want to see who wrote this speech because he didn't write this shit himself. Trust me. This man don't care. He doesn't care about anything like that. He's just spewing out words from like whatever they give him to read. He doesn't care. The apology comes after a panel of experts found that the, the Dutch participation in slavery was a crime against humanity and recommended an apology and reparations in 2021. The panel was established in the wake of the murder of George Floyd by a policeman in the United States in 2020. Listen to that. This guy only came out with an apology after a panel told him to do it. Like, this guy didn't care before, you know? And I really wonder what this, or like, who were the members that constituted this panel of experts, so-called experts on slavery? I bet you it's a shit ton of white people. 
Just saying. Not to hate on white people, but yeah, definitely. There's a ton of white people. White experts on slavery. Because yeah, people who sell the merchandise should know the quality of the merchandise. Yeah? Remember that one. So, Ruth ruled out reparations last week as a press con- at a press conference. However, the Dutch government is establishing a 200 million euro, that's 3.6 billion rand education fund, according to Reuters. He ruled out reparations. It was like, no reparations for you guys. Y'all can eat that and like do whatever the fuck you want with your feelings, right? And give out no reparations. And they're going insta- to, instead of giving you guys reparations, this is going to give you guys 200 million euros worth of education. Hey, hey, hey. Guess what type of education you're going to be getting? Westernized education. Education on the Western terms. You know? The terms that they dictate because the money's coming out of their coffers. It's not education you deserve. It's not education you want. It's education that they deem fit for you to be able to get integrated in their society. Not an education that's going to further your thinking. That's something that's going to help you become a better person. Not something that's going to teach you your history of, the, of your ancestors and the people who fought for you. You know? It's, it's very sad, but this is what the world's come down to. And they're never going to accept that this is the truth. It's, it's not going to happen until a panel of experts is going to have to come tell them that we probably should do this because, uh, yeah, the media, it's getting kind of crazy out there. So George Floyd just got killed. Like, there's a lot of people getting shot on the stage. So we could use this as a media stunt and just sweep a, a shit ton of stuff under the rug. Trust me, this article and this whole thing going on right now, they're probably doing this to sweep some more stuff under the rug. But we're only going to find out about it a little later down the line because we're talking about recession right now. I don't think no one wants talking about depression or anything. Nope. But yeah, what do we have? Let's keep reading here, guys. The Golden Age funded by slavery. The Dutch Golden Age in the 16th and 17th centuries was mostly funded by shipping approximately 600,000 Africans to South America and the Caribbean as part of the slave trade. Trust me, 600,000 is a tiny number, man. Approx- that's approximate. It was probably way more than that. Way more than that. But yeah, approximately. I'll take that. Individuals, individual cities like Amsterdam Rotterdam, The Hague, and Utrecht formally apologized for slavery before Hoot's announcement, placing pressure on the Prime Minister who first said slavery was too far back for an apology before changing his tune. Yeah, see? I told you this guy doesn't care. He first said, he, he stated his opinion, he doesn't care. He said it's way too far back to, to warrant an apology. And the apology is just words. He doesn't really mean it. It's because he was, he was asked to say it. He doesn't mean what he said. Because these were his true feelings. He didn't care. He said, he said it himself. It's way too far back. And that's what a lot, a lot of like our Caucasian brothers and sisters think. It's way too far back. We didn't do it ourselves. But you, you benefit from it up till today. You benefit on the work and the bones and, and the hard work that, these people, that our ancestors put in. Till today, your civilization is founded on the hard work that our ancestors put in. You know, like, we built what you have today. You're still benefiting from it till today. The 200 million, 200 million you're going to give away. You think that came, that just came from you guys' economic prosperity? I'm sorry, what does, what does the Netherlands have to offer? Sh- like, w- honestly, economically, what does the Netherlands have to offer? Nothing, you know, but they are they are one of the richest nations in the world. And how they get that and how how are they still there till today? Slavery and neocolonialism. Trust me on that. I said it. So well, anyway, who cares? Not not someone like me, right? I'm just another person on the Internet just talking shit. Let's keep reading here, guys. So the Dutch ministers traveled to seven former colonies in South America and the Caribbean for Monday's announcement. However, there is some controversy with some groups and countries unwilling to accept the rushed apology. 
course, we see through your bullshit. That's why we're not willing to accept it. Duh. Last week, Sylvia ja Jacobs, the prime minister of St. Martin, said she will not accept the apology without a discussion. I want to know exactly what this person is trying to discuss. Telling you, fueling some more of the agendas, because honestly, our leaders don't really care. But in the pockets of these people, too. So, yeah. Anyway, I'd really like to see what she has to discuss with these people, though. Because I don't think it's, it's going to be a very fruitful discussion if, you, if you're in a position where you have nothing to bargain. You have no bargaining chips. They just say what they want and they do what they want. What are you going to bargain? Discussion? They're apologizing and you're saying we want more. Like, what do you think they're going to give you? They give you a 200 million uh, fund for education, for your people's education, to get integrated in their system so you can get even more slavery, you know, to get enslaved even more. But yeah. Aruba's Prime Minister Evelyn Weaver Cross was the first leader to accept the apology. Yeah, she just, you were just like, I guess. Like, what, what, were you, what, else, what else you want us to do? Let's just accept it. Man. It's a PR stunt. Let's just all do the PR. <laughs> and that's it. There is not one right time for everyone. Not one right word for everyone. Not one right place for everyone, said Hoot in his speech. Slavery was officially abolished in Suriname and other Dutch territories on 1st of July, 1863, but it only really came to an end in 1873 after a 10 year transition period, as per AFP. Slavery commemoration groups have pointed to the 150th anniversary of that date in 2023 as their preferred day for the apology instead of the arbitrary date of 19th december 2022 yeah i guess they have an they have to have an opinion right descendants of dutch slavery celebrate keti koti that's breaking the chains in suriname on 1st of july annually some groups said the apology should come from king willem alexander there on the day according to reuters yeah I agree. If anything, if you want an apology, it should probably come from the person from the, the lineage or the family that said you guys it was okay for you guys to do this, do this stuff, right? Because honestly, it doesn't really matter. What matters the most is what's happening now, you know? And right now, we are going through a crisis of neocolonialism. These people have not left us in peace, they still pillage our lands. They still enslave our people through economic policies. And uh, yeah, that's what happens. They give you back your own money, claiming it's theirs, and they keep enslaving your children. And we live in this right now. But they're not willing to accept it because who is that stupid? They're just going to be like, it's, some, it's economics, yo. No one's doing stupid shit. They're like, dude. How are you going to give people education with their own money? And I can say so because 200 million is nothing of, the, of how much you've taken away from these people, you know, taking away their educational systems, taking away their cultures, their histories, like you write their books and give it to them. And you claim that that is the history because that's how you want to control the narrative. Now you want to give them education on your own terms for them to, for them to do what? To get integrated in your system. So, like, I don't really think this is, this is anything proper. This is a total PR stunt, and these people don't really care. But I'm just another dude on the internet, as I said, and, uh, yeah, just my opinion. So let me know what you think about this, guys, and uh, like the video if you like it, and leave a comment for your boy, because, uh, yeah, we're trying to get this done.